In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the RabbitMQ message broker to implement the producer-consumer pattern and introduce communication between two applications using messaging. We're going to use the official RabbitMQ client library to implement this, so let's jump into the code and see how we can do this. The RabbitMQ client nougat package is the official client library for the RabbitMQ message broker. It currently targets .NET 8, or .NET Standard 2.0, which means you can also use it inside of a .NET 9 application, which is what we are going to do inside of this video. You can see that this is a fairly popular library with more than 300 million downloads, and it's safe to use inside of a commercial application. The client library is just one piece of the puzzle. We actually need the RabbitMQ message broker, and we're going to run it using Docker. But first, let's start with our producer application and see how we can use this client library. So I prepared a simple application with a producer and a consumer project, and we're going to start from the producer side. So let's go ahead and install the client library. I will look for RabbitMQ client, and I'm going to install the latest version, which at the time of recording this video is 7.1.2. So now that I have my client library installed, I can go ahead and use it. So the first thing we're going to need is a so-called connection factory. I'm going to instantiate one by newing up a connection factory instance, and I'll have to reference the RabbitMQ client namespace to be able to see this type. Now inside of this, I only want to set one property, which is the host name of the RabbitMQ instance that I want to connect to. And I'm going to make this available on localhost using the default port, which is 5672. After we have our connection factory, we want to create a new connection. So I'm going to say await factory create connection async. And this is going to open up a new connection to my RabbitMQ broker. Finally, now that I have the connection, I can go ahead and instantiate a new channel. And this is how I can actually communicate with my broker instance. So I'm going to new up a channel and both of these are expensive resources. So I want to make sure that I wrap them inside of a using statement or in this case, an inline using. And then the channel is how we can interact with our broker. For example, I can bind to a queue, declare a queue, delete it, unbind a specific queue. I can also work with exchanges using the exchange APIs. And then there's also support for acknowledging and consuming messages. So let's say I want to declare a queue. I will call the queue declare async method. And this has a couple of arguments. Let's start by specifying the queue name. And this is where we are going to publish our messages. The name of the queue can be anything. We don't have to be particularly creative. So I'm just going to call it the message queue. Then we have a couple of more arguments to set. And the next one is if the queue should be durable or not. I want to set this to true, which means that any messages I publish to RabbitMQ are going to survive our broker restart. If the queue isn't durable, then it's going to disappear after the broker stops, and we may end up losing messages if we haven't consumed them. Then I want to set exclusive to false. This means that the queue is exclusive to the connection that declared it. I also want to set auto delete to false, which means that the queue should be deleted if the last subscriber unsubscribes. And finally, I'm going to pass in null for the arguments parameter. And this will effectively create a new queue inside of the RabbitMQ message broker if it doesn't exist, which means that this is an idempotent operation and it's safe to call it multiple times. And then what do I want to do from my producer application? Let's say I want to run a for loop for 10 iterations and I want to create some sort of message that I want to publish to my queue. So let's say that the message consists of the current UTC time plus a randomly generated version seven UUID. Then I need to get the binary representation of this string by saying encoding UTF-8 get bytes and pass in the message as the argument. And now I can use my channel instance to do a basic publish. I want to specifically target my queue. So I'm going to specify an empty string for the exchange name. And for the routing key, I'm going to type message, which is the name of the queue that we declared above. If I set the mandatory property to true, it means it's going to be routed to a queue. Now I also want to provide some basic properties. So I'm going to new up a basic properties instance. And here I just want to set persistent to true, which is me telling the broker that it should persist this message inside of the queue. And finally, we can specify the message body. And then for example, I can say console write line sent 
and then let's specify the message that we sent and I'm going to delay by calling task delay and for example let's delay for two seconds so that it's easier to observe what's happening when we start the application so this is enough for our producer now we also need a rabbitmq instance and you can run one using docker by specifying this command inside of the command line so we want to execute docker run give our instance a name expose the default port and I'm also exposing the management port because I want to be using the RabbitMQ management instance. I'm going to run this. And if I open up Docker Desktop, you will see that I have my one container instance running, which is the RabbitMQ image. I'm going to navigate to the management port and the default credentials are guest and guest. Of course, you can change this by specifying the respective environment variables. And once you log in, you can see the RabbitMQ management UI. Now, if we go into queues and streams, you will see that we currently don't have any queues and we have some default exchanges that are created by RabbitMQ. So now let's go ahead and run our application and I'm going to place a breakpoint here and start debugging the RabbitMQ producer. So I'm going to say debug, start new instance and I only want to run the producer application at the time being. So you can see that we are able to instantiate a factory open up a connection and create a channel. So now I'm going to call queue declare async and this completes and let's just jump into the RabbitMQ management UI for a moment. And if we go back to the queues and streams tab, you will see that we have one message queue defined. It has the name message, which is what we assigned it when we were creating it. And it's configured as a durable queue and we can now publish messages to this queue. So if I go back to my application and press continue and I open up the console, you can see that every two seconds, we're going to publish a message that contains the current UTC time and the randomly generated version version 7 UUID. Now currently we are just publishing our messages to a queue. We aren't consuming them. So we have to implement something similar to what we have here inside of the consumer application. So I'm going to reuse the code that we have here because we will also need it inside of our consumer. So we also have to create a connection factory, open a connection and create a channel. And we also have to declare the queue because the consumer application could start running before the producer starts up. So we want to make sure that the queue exists even though we aren't ready to consume some messages yet. So let's write some statement to the console. I'm going to say waiting for messages. The next thing we have to do is define a consumer. So I'm going to create a new eventing basic consumer and I'm going to pass it the channel instance. The consumer is going to expose an event received async where I can provide an async delegate to consume the message from the queue. Now the delegate is going to contain the object that I'm going to call sender and it's also going to contain the actual event arguments. I'm going to call this the event args. So now I can define this delegate and here we can consume our message that we receive from the queue. Using the event arguments, we can access the message body as an array of bytes, and then we can get the actual message string by saying encoding UTF-8 get string, and we specify the array of bytes representing our message body. Now, if this were a JSON object, we could also deserialize it here and consume our message if it's strongly typed. But for now, let's just say console write line and I'm going to say received and I'll specify the message contents. Now the next important step after we have processed the message is to actually acknowledge it to the broker. This means that the message will be removed from the queue so that any concurrent consumers won't be able to process this message. What I can do here is cast the sender object into an async eventing basic consumer. And once I have this object, I can access its channel instance and then I can call the basic acknowledge method. Now this expects a delivery tag and we have this on the event arguments. Now I also want to specify multiple as false. This means that we are only going to acknowledge the current message. And of course I have to await this because it's an async method. Now this just defines my consumer. We also have to start actually consuming the messages and we can do this by saying channel 
basic consume async, we have to specify our queue name, which is just message. I'm going to specify auto acknowledge as false because I want to manually acknowledge my messages. And finally, I'm going to pass in the consumer instance, which is going to be executed when we receive a message from our broker. And finally, I'm just going to say console read line so that my console doesn't stop when I start the application. So now I'm going to set both of my projects as the startup, which I already have configured here. So I'm happy with this. And let's start both of our applications. Now notice that the consumer already consumed 10 messages right from the start. This is because we already ran the producer application once and those messages were still alive inside of our queue. Now in the current run of the producer, we published 10 more messages and you can see here that we consumed 20 messages in total. There's a big burst of 10 messages right away, which are the messages that were waiting in the queue and then 10 more messages that we produced every two seconds after that. So this is how you can implement the producer consumer pattern using the RabbitMQ client library. From here, we can start building more complex scenarios. For example, we can start introducing JSON serialization for our messages to make them strongly typed. We can also introduce an exchange and bind our queue to the exchange to implement fanout messaging and some more advanced messaging patterns. Now, I think it's interesting to highlight how the mass transit library, which has recently gone commercial, abstracts all of this behind a very simple API. When you have to go down to the native level using the RabbitMQ client library, you suddenly have to do a lot more work to implement this functionality. Nonetheless, I think this is very fundamental knowledge and it's something that every .NET developer should master if they are building distributed systems that use a message broker. Now, if you want to learn more about queues and exchanges with RabbitMQ, I have an excellent video that you should watch next. Even though it uses mass transit, I think you will find it valuable. Check out my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills. Make sure to smash the like button on your way out. And until next time, stay awesome.